because the squad itself was a lot younger than I was. I think as I became captain there, there was a certain change in sort of transfer policy. It went from people who were Champions League winners who were just trying to play in West London. You know, it's people who were coming up from, say, League One, League Two, they were under like 22, 23 years of age. But I think, interestingly for Craig and the point that the article made about, say, that element of culture and people leading it and senior pros, I think to be able to do that, you need the foundation of having a manager that's probably been there for longer than like a year, two years as well. Mm. Because I hear similar things from City and other sides which have done well historically, or sorry, in recent times. Because then you know the manager, this is the way it's going to be, this is the culture of the football club, the players themselves, like... A senior pro doesn't necessarily need to be someone that's old. It could be somebody like Alexander Arnold. He's a vice captain, but he's still in, the, in his low 20s. And he can do that because he's played for so long and they understand what it's like to play for the team, understand what it's like to help people settle in. And I think it's good when you can step into a place as a new player and know that's what it's about, to know that you're being welcomed into the space as opposed to, you know, at times when you enter a club that's in transition, it's almost dog eat dog. Does the manager like this guy? Well, this guy now wants to leave. This guy's worried about himself. But that whole team environment, when you can set it up in that right way, I'm sure it's a manager's dream. But then also it gives people a chance to be successful because realistically, and I'm sure Steve would probably agree with this, like there are so many ups and downs within a season. But if you if that group is right, you'll find ways to be able to navigate those bad moments and work hard together to try and be successful. And nothing's guaranteed, but it's a far better atmosphere than a place which is divided, which is really toxic and you know doesn't have a culture apart from people solely fending for themselves. What was it like when you left Liverpool, Stephen? Saw other well, no, not even when you left Liverpool. You saw a change at Liverpool, obviously. If you, yeah. you're that tight group that you had that was so successful, yeah. and then once that dispersed, obviously, how difficult was it then to try and get that bond again? Well, it's so difficult that we couldn't do it. Why? Because we made too many changes at the one time, right? Which actually were forced upon the club, and the changes that were made the character of the players that came in, the club was A, too big for them, and so then they started worrying about themselves only. Right. That's a, a recipe for disaster. And that's what happened. And as a senior member of the team, did you try? And Absolutely. Get, but it just was... Yeah, and, 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 you, and you asked a couple of minutes ago, you said, you know, it has to happen organically. Right. You really, you really can't force it. And because, because the likes of myself did, did try and force it. And we did try and organise nights out. Right. And it actually made it worse because people wouldn't turn up. And so eventually you just, it's one of them. Yeah. You can only, you can only try and do so many things. So yeah, if, if, if you have the wrong characters and, and it doesn't gel, you can, you can organise what you want. It's not going to happen. But, but the actual piece, though, I, I, I was nearly sick half the time. <laughs> it, it. it was very Liverpool TV. It was so, it was so <laughs> set up for fans. Yeah. You know, oh, Mo, Mo Salah's been brought into the leadership group. I mean, again, absolute garbage. <laughs> absolute nonsense. Somebody, it, it just happens. Right. You know, somebody will speak up, and then if they're talking sense, people will listen to them. But if somebody speaks up and they're talking garbage, then it's one of them. You, you'd be quiet. You know, so all of these things and all this stuff on the wall, I can't stand that. All these, all these, all these. It little... can't hurt though, can it? If listen, if it, if it does or it inspires one person, yes, I guess that's fine. Okay, but I just personally think it's it's completely out of gobbledygook. Why? Well, I tell you what, Gillette Stadium is covered in them, right? Yeah. And of course, when the Patriots were flying with Tom Brady and everyone else. It was like, oh, it's inspiring walking around, reading all the things. I'll tell you what, they can't win a game to save their life now. <laughs> That's true. But they've still got all these things. Yeah. You know, so it, <laughs> as I said, if it, if it helps one person, that's fine. But personally, I don't, I don't float my boat. <laughs> 